You know the feeling. You've picked a time to meet your buddy at the trailhead. You're gonna head out on a sick lap, but they're late, again. So instead of twiddling your thumbs, cursing them in the back of your head, use this time wisely. Brush up on some car park skills because they're gonna be really helpful when you finally do hit the trails. And if nothing else, you'll impress them with your insanely long wheelies and your super balanced track stands. Lucky for me, Tom Bradshaw's on time today. So while we wait for Jason to finish doing his hair and meet us out here, let's play around in the car park. We've even got the flat pedals on today to keep us really honest. <laughs> First up, we've got the front wheel lift. Now, most people can't remember the last time they actually practiced a front wheel lift in a car park, and why would you? Well, because they're actually very helpful when it comes to on-trail riding, lifting your front wheel up and over obstacles like roots and rocks. It's gonna make a huge difference if you actually practice. Now, once you've mastered this little stick we've got here jumping over, maybe level up, take it to a speed bump or a curb. Things that help me when I'm doing front wheel lifts is to keep your body in a nice neutral position, maybe just a little bit forward with the body weight, compress into the fork, and then lift up that front wheel. All right, now you've nailed the front wheel lift, let's go for a rear wheel lift. Now out on trail, you're gonna use this on a technical climb. Maybe when you come to a slippery rock or root, instead of pedaling up that feature, try unweight to get that rear wheel over it. So here in the car park, you can set your body position, drop your heels, and hop on over like you did with that front wheel. Final little pro tip, especially if you have flat pedals, don't forget to scoop. Otherwise, you're literally just jumping up and down on the platforms. Moving on to the ever popular wheelie. It's a bit of a complimentary move to that front wheel lift we've already done, but this move is really important when you're out on trail, you're seated, pedaling, and you gotta get that front wheel up and over an obstacle. Things that help when I'm practicing my wheelies are to remember to start in an easy gear, but not too easy. Keep those arms extended out in front of you and keep your chest nice and open. Now I'm no wind masters, but I always have my rear brake on when I'm doing a wheelie. That allows me to control how far back and forward I'm going and lets me shut it down if I'm gonna loop out backwards. Possibly the safest thing to practice in the parking lot, skinnies. Someone's kindly painted a bunch of practice lines for us here. And if you're like me and terrified of the high wooden consequences on trail, here's a perfect place to start. Now, if Tom's skinny is just a little too skinny for you, a little intimidating, I've chosen this awesome little speed bump here. It's quite a bit wider, but with the round on top, it's gonna feel a bit more like you're on an elevated skinny. And what I actually do is I drop my seat post just a tiny little bit so it's not fully extended. And that way you've got a bit more room to move around. Oh God, eyes up. Ground is lava. Ground is lava. One skill I do actually enjoy practicing a lot are track stands. This little technique comes in hand quite often out on the trail and is really helpful in improving your balance. For example, if you're coming up to a big rock roll and you just wanna stop and pause at the top to check out your line choice and then just nose on in. To keep your wheels from rolling all around the car park, try locking your brakes up. It's gonna keep the bike in one stable position Either both brakes, front or rear, doesn't really matter, but it is going to help. If you need some motivation to practice a track stands, just think about the next time you're at the traffic lights and there's that pack of roadies there. Give them a run for their money, or turn it into a game. Bit of a game of foot down. Pick an area, find a mate, whoever puts their foot down first loses. Now what I always say is practice your strengths and strengthen your weaknesses. For me personally, the stoppy is a little bit of a weakness, but I could always use more practice because I've been on tons of tracks with really tight switchbacks and there's nothing that's gonna get you around those besides getting your wheel off of the ground, repositioning it, and getting out of there. 
Soppies are also an awesome opportunity to practice your front brake control and shifting the weight on the bike. All right, that was looking a little bit easy for you there, Bradshaw. How can we make this harder? Well, if you're feeling okay on the stoppy, start bringing the rear around. Think about it like going around the clock. 12, 11, 10. Maybe put a stick down, hop around that. Make it relatable to the trail a bit. If you've been scrolling around social media, seeing a bunch of people turning around cones on a grass slope and wondering what the heck that's all about, well, they're practicing their cornering. And hot tip between you and me, you don't need the fancy cones. A bunch of sticks will do just fine. How's that for a stick, Tom? Put the sticks down as far or as close as you like to get it. You'll get a feel for it, but practice leaning your bike, looking ahead, and even try swapping your feet around. Just see how that feels. Now, if you're still waiting on a mate and just went through all those skills, here's a couple party tricks to pull out at your next post-ride sesh. Now hopefully those car park skills don't tire you out so much that you can't go pedal when your buddy finally arrives. Now I'm a huge fan of marginal gains and I know a little practice session goes a long way in leveling up your riding. And if nothing else, it reminds you to stay fun, move around on the bike, and don't take yourself so seriously. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe for all our new releases that are coming out soon.